All right, last part of CR, post-processing applications. Um, so some post-processing things that you'll do, and that means once the image is processed and on your screen, uh, so post, you can um, annotate your image. So annotation is basically writing on your picture. Um, do you need to let your radiologist know patient position? And a lot of times we'll do this with upright or supine or decubitus or cross table or we did something PA that we normally do AP because of trauma, something like that. Um, portable identifier, if it's a time sequence, like a small bell fall through where you do films every 30 minutes or something like that, um, you would write 30 minute film at 8.30 or one hour film at nine o'clock, whatever it is. Um, so annotation you can write, and on most of your machines will have presets of basic ones that you use all the time. Um, or it'll have a free text option where you can type in and put it on your image. Try to keep the annotations out of anatomy whenever possible. Um, I know sometimes abdomen, um, you can't really do it, but try to keep it away from the pertinent anatomy if you can. Cropping is um, electronic collimation kind of post-exposure. You can, um, depending on your machine, select a square, or I call this one connect the dots. Um, and then click into your picture and crop out certain areas. Um, this is used more than it should be. As a technologist, if you've exposed this anatomy, it should be red. So how they cropped this chest x-ray to remove all the um, arms and abdomen areas that they exposed, cropped it out, and this is the image that was sent to the radiologist that shouldn't be happening. So it should not replace collimation at time of exposure, okay? It should only be used if there's maybe an artifact on the side of the film that we need to remove, um, or there's a bright white light for, for some reason the machine didn't take out. It should not be used to take out anatomy to make your picture look perfect to send to the radiologist. That's not what it's for. All right, stitching is used for the scoliosis um, machine. And ours has a CR plate. Our CR um, scoliosis cassette has two 1417 plates inside of it. The technologist uh, will make the exposure in the room and then they have to process both plates. So we have to process one, swing the cassette around and process the other. So it'll look similar to this picture. You're gonna have a top and a bottom separated. Once you process the second image, this little button will appear on our Fuji CR. And this is called the stitching button. You can see how it has three little pictures into one. Once you click this, it will then combine the two pictures into one to send over to the radiologist. As long as you didn't collimate um, off the little sensors that are on the sides, and when we get to scoliosis, I'll tell you where those are, um, then you have to do it manually. But so image stitching is for scoliosis. Windowing. Windowing is also a post-processing application. Um, once the area, once the image is processed, the technologist can click onto the image and modify sort of the brightness and contrast of it. It's called windowing. You can adjust how your image looks visually. You can make it lighter, darker, more gray, less gray, um, a little bit. If you are really having to do this a lot, you most likely should repeat your image. Window level is changing the brightness of the image, so making it brighter or darker. Window width changes the contrast of the image, so more gray, less gray. Um, a wide window width gives you a longer scale of gray shades. So we know our contrast scales that we learned first semester, right? A long scale has more gray, and that's considered low contrast. So that would be like your chest x-ray or your abdomen that have a lot of different organs and different densities and you know, soft tissue and fluid, air, bone, all of the things. Um, they're gonna have a lot more color range than say a hand, right? So wide window width means more shades of gray, lower contrast, and when you have a lot of gray, it's your big gray elephant, right? Your elephant's your contrast. Narrow window width means a short scale. So not a lot of gray. That's considered higher contrast, so more black and white. 
So mostly black and white. Think of like um, a hand x-ray or a wrist x-ray. There's not a lot of fluid in there. There's not levels of soft tissue or fat or fluid and those kind of things. Um, so that's your short little penguin who likes to get high, right? Your blue penguin, they're black and white, <laughs> like to get high. Um, window width, window level will actually change the numerical value of each displaying pixel when it adjusts the gray scale that's applied. Just remember in your pre-processing um, applications, um, your lookup table was responsible for kind of assigning the digital contrast. This is something that a technologist can manipulate post-processing to adjust contrast. So window width is going to be post-processing post for contrast. Lookup table is determined pre-processing. And that, I think, wraps up all of those things. Um, so what should we know out of this whole spiel? That computed radiography is what CR stands for, and that it's cassette-based. It uses a photostimulable phosphor that's from the barium floral highlight family. We went over the um, layers of the CR plate. Really, our main one that we worry about the most is this phosphor active layer. That's like the main player. It catches the x-rays, holds the x-rays until... Um, they're released, right? The processing sequence, it's exposed, it's stimulated, it's red. I missed a comma there, erased. Um, <laughs> the red ruby laser, it's not really a ruby, it's just a red laser, but that's how I remember it. It moves in a raster pattern, right? Left to right, down the cassette, um, which emits that blue or violet light. It's erased by a bright light. Um, the photo multiplier and analog to digital converter then come into play your photo multiplier. When I see photo, I think light. Um, it's going to take this light, these light photons, and now we need our analog to digital converter to take that um, electrical signal and convert it to a digital readout that we can see on the monitor. The histogram is the graphical representation, right? The graph of each of your settings you pick on the control panel. The lookup table, or LUT, uh, determines your digital contrast. We learned about EIs and S numbers. CR cassettes use S numbers, and they're inverse. The ghost error was the erasing error. Moria pattern was that CR grid error that has the um, wave-like appearance. The text should be clean. The plates were dust. <laughs> Dose creep is kind of an increase in technique as we go. Um, we want to kind of make sure that we're aware of our ER numbers and ranges to prevent that. And then post-processing applications I want you to know is annotation, cropping, stitching, and windowing. Um, all right, I would have you watch um, the Red Tech Bootcamp CR videos and read uh, Bouchong's Chapter 15, and that's going to wrap up CR.